Excuse me, your name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know I'm good. Thank <laughs> you. 
Or because the king's here and it's a festival day, we might have a competition known as a goose shoot. To have a goose shoot, you take a live goose, you bury it in the sand up to its neck, you walk back a hundred paces and try to shoot the left eye out of the goose. If you're going to achieve this goal, your family gets enough meat to eat for a week. Now while this may sound cool, in the United States we used to have the turkey shoot. And the way it used to work, you take a live turkey, tie a string around his leg, and tie it behind a log. Walk back a hundred paces and go and when it sticks up its head, you shoot it. Today, this would be a turkey shoot. Put the arrows down range, count up the number of points, whoever gets the most points wins a frozen turkey. This is not the same skill set. This is a target from the 1800s. The Prince of Wales loved to shoot archery. And everywhere he went, the scoring was different and the targets were different. And he thought, this is wrong. They should all be the same. And since he's the Prince of Wales, he could make that decision. So this is a 48 round in the Prince's colors. The central disc is 10. The outside yellow ring is nine. Every time the color changes, the score drops by two. It was nine, seven, five, three, one. That... Now, to make it even more complicated, the next round is our speed round. We want to show you how fast an archer can put arrows down range. So each of us will fire six arrows from the short line. We'll fire them as quickly as we can. The archer that fires the last arrow on the line loses 10 points. So not only are we targeting, we're targeting at speed. The call will be draw and loose like yesterday. <laughs> Draw. Loose. spend it, I'm in the middle of a war. And then, someone brings gunpowder to my island, and my career is over. You see, we argue for about a hundred years, which is better, an archer or a musketeer. So we can compare them. Rate of fire. An archer can put 10 arrows a minute down range. 12 and 14, not difficult. A musketeer, well trained. Cream of the crop, three shots a minute. There are 30 separate steps to load and fire a musket. Everything goes down the barrel, it just takes that long. Weather, an archer can shoot in rain, snow, sleet, or hail, it does not matter. Musketeers, it's raining, or shooting an archery competition in Central Park, New York. And I'm talking long pants, shirt, jacket, tie, Donkey hat, shooting archery. 
Now, can you imagine walking through Central Park today with a bow and some arrows? <laughs> How fast would you be arrested? And so, archery changes, and Americans do it. They refine, and they make bows out of all sorts of things. Spring steel, or fiberglass, or maybe they'll build one as a machine for firing arrows, which is what a compound bow is. A compound bow has pulleys, cams, and when you draw it back, it may draw at 70 pounds, but at the let off, so imagine you're one of 5,000 archers, and you launch this arrow down the field. You're at the draw, when you give the whistle, it's time for you to fire. We can't hit the target at this distance. It is not difficult. We are trying not to, because this puts a really big hole in the target. <laughs> yeah, everybody says hit the target, you step back and you do, you're going to have a big hole. All right, we'll draw you. Draw! Loose! Draw the arrow, please! There are several bows out here in the field. Guards now have a very good bows for today. They're made of composites and wood, and they have a cutting arrow shell. So when they target, they're shooting directly through the ball. Oh, that's a standard longbow. Doesn't have a cutting arrow shell. It can't, because it would weaken the bow too much. For her arrow, for her arrow to go straight, it actually has a curve around the bow. So the archer's paradox, where the arrow goes straight, it has to bend. So what happens is when you draw the straight, you have potential. When you release it, energy becomes kinetic. In that instant, all that energy is transferred to the arrow. But the arrow doesn't move. But the said it shouldn't. And so all that energy has to go somewhere, and it torques the arrow for just a minute. Then it leaks off the ball. And in that instant, that arrow bends. And the arrow is through the bow, it bends just enough to back the center. If it bends too much, it's too soft, and it goes to the left. If it's too hard, it doesn't bend at all. It goes to the right. Like that. So the arrow has to match the bow. My longbow is this one, slightly different. It's the horse bow. You start to charge the long bows on the steps of Russia, where they encircle their enemy and shoot into the center. And because the steps of Russia are a desert, this entire bow would have been made out of one buffalo, every part of it. The legs are made out of corn, which is heated, bent before. The edge over here should see in the hand of bone. It's held together with high glue when we boil the rest of the cow down. And finally, what ties it together is the sinew, which is the connective tissue that holds the muscle to the bone. Every part of the cow is right here. One line. So 1545, it was an inflection point for many things. In 1545, we're at war with the French. Where's the harbor? The King's warship, Mary Rose, is there. On the Mary Rose, it's 400 men, 200 archers. During that battle, that ship turns, rolls over six. 400 men go in the water, 30 come out. In the 18